Hi, it's Robin Sharma, the author of The 5am Club, and I really hope you're great. I hope you are in hot pursuit of your mighty mission. I hope you're materializing your primal genius. I hope you are radiating positivity to every person you meet. I hope you are manifesting your greatest productivity. I hope you're living not only a successful life today, but a soulful life. And in this specific mastery session, I'm gonna walk you through four truths to grow self-love. Now you may say to me, Robin, self-love, we come to you for leadership mentorship. Robin, we come to you for elite performance advice. Robin, we come to you for your tactics on exponential productivity or building a great company or ha having service to humanity. What are you talking about self-love? Well, I think in many ways, self-love is the starting point to world class. And you've never heard me say that before, but the way you are in the world is a deep reflection of the way you are with yourself. You know, your prosperity and your income is always a reflection of your self-identity. Your daily behavior is always a reflection of your deepest beliefs. You're not gonna go on the world, out in the world, and represent your highest creativity, productivity, and mastery if you hate yourself. You're not gonna be kind to people on the street, smile at strangers, uplift a teammate, wow a customer if you're full of hatred about who you truly are. And I think this is one of the missed ideas and one of the missed truths in the world today. The doorway to success really does open inward, it doesn't open outward. And I've seen so many people, even some of the people I coach, you know, these people, they learn the intellectual ideas to build an empire. And I also teach them how they multiply productivity. And I also teach them how do you scale your fortunes and build a life of joy, peace, beauty, and freedom. And yet some of them, here's what they do. They tear it all down. We get to these amazing results through our coaching together and they hit an inflection point where they start to self-sabotage. Maybe they start to drink too much. Maybe they start to be rude to the people on their team. Maybe they start to pick fights with their significant other. Maybe they start to get too distracted by digital media and they start to tear it all down. It is a huge act of self-sabotage and I've seen it for so many years working with the best of the best. Why does that happen? Well, it happens because you will never rise any higher than the way you see yourself on the outside. If you don't feel you are deserving of beauty, prosperity, acclaim, fame, fortune, impact on society, if you don't really feel you deserve it because you feel like you're not enough, you really don't like yourself, you're suffering from what psychologists call imposter syndrome, then you're gonna read the books, you're gonna watch these mastery sessions, you're gonna go to the courses, you're gonna do the work, but you are gonna reach a point where your mindset becomes in conflict with your heart set. If you don't know these four interior empires, I'm always talking about mindset, heart set, health set, and soul set. Read about them and learn about them in the 5 a.m. club, my latest book. But the larger point is simply this. Think about this idea of self-sabotage. And it all comes from a lack of self-love. You know, if as a child, you didn't receive appreciation from your parents. If as a child, you might have received physical love or physical caring, but that heart set need, that need for love and appreciation, that need for human validation, if you didn't get that from your parents or you didn't get that from your teachers or you didn't get that from your early influences, well, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna be suffering, and I use the word intentionally, you're gonna be suffering from these heart set wounds of neglect, emotional neglect. And you're not gonna like yourself very much. And especially in this culture of comparison, you're gonna, those wounds are gonna be activated every single day. You're gonna walk out in the world and you're gonna look at your device and you're gonna see all these people showing you a highlight reel of the lives they want you to think they're living. Most of it's just an illusion. I was reading recently, there is actually a service where you can rent a jet on a runway and for 20 minutes you can go to the runway and get a photographer to take pictures of you on a private jet and outside of the private jet, you know, like this, right? 
and you get to post it on social media. And you can hire photographers to take you to all these luxury brand stores where you're outside of the luxury brand store and you're like, outside of the luxury brand store, maybe even if you can't afford the watch or the purse or the shoes or whatever it is. What is the point I'm suggesting to you? Everything begins within. If you don't love yourself, then you're gonna go out into the world and in this culture of showbiz, this culture of bling, this culture of comparison, this culture of social media gratification, you're gonna get activated, you're gonna get pinged. Those ancient wounds are gonna get touched on every single day and you're just gonna be miserable. And so four truths to help you grow self-love so that you build that inner warrior in this place of peace and this huge well of tranquility that cannot be disrupted when you go out into the world is is really mission critical, right? You wanna be so strong in your skin, so strong in your luminosity, so strong in your relationship with who you truly are that nothing in the outer world can activate you and diminish your energy and make you feel not enough. You know what Eleanor Roosevelt said, my friend? No one can insult you without your permission. You know what Oscar Wilde said? He said, be yourself. Everyone else is taken. You know what Warren Buffett once said? There can never be a better you than you. You know what Jack Welch said when he was at GE? Do not lose yourself on the way to the top. So let me walk you through four specific truths that will help you grow self-love. Number one, honor your specialness. Honor your specialness. Look, we've got billions of people on this tiny planet, and yet there is no other person alive today quite like you. No one quite like you. the, the gifts that you have. No one quite like the way that you talk. No one has the same fingerprints. No one walks exactly in the same way as you. No one has the same hopes and dreams as you. No one has had the same sufferings that you have. No one has become precisely the same person that you are. No one has the same potential you have. No one has exactly the same primal genius that lurks at your core. That makes you special. Now, I'm not suggesting that you fall into what I call RAM syndrome, W-R-A-M, world revolves around me. Look, I'm so special, I'm entitled. I'm so special, world, give me a great living. I see that all over the world. We live in this society of great entitlement. People don't want to show up early. People are not committed to mastery in all cases. A lot of people are like, give to me, and they become takers from their organizations and their marketplaces and their society versus understanding you get from the world what you give to the world. But the point on this first truth is honor your specialness, appreciate who you are. There is no one quite like you. The second truth to grow self-love is to do hard things daily. And I want you to think about this one really intimately right here, right now. When you get up every day, are you on the path of least resistance? I, you know, someone said to me on one of my social feeds the other day, Robin, I've read the 5 a.m. club, loved the information, full of energy to get it done, but I need to tell you, it sounds very easy. It's much harder to do in real life. Well, what is this love we all have in this world we live in of things needing to be easy? Society has sold us a bill of goods. You know, everything should be easy. We should transform our health with one quick pill. You know, a great relationship should happen in a month. And if we don't have a magical relationship, if we're not all in love and wonder, then we should leave the relationship. If we're at a job, you know, anything that's worth doing is challenging at first. And if we're at a job, oh, after three months, if it's not the job of my lifetime, we leave it. In a relationship, you know, if it's not perfect, we leave it. If we want to upgrade our health, oh, I've been at it two weeks. Oh, you know what? It's really hard. I need to stop my journey to world-class fitness. What's my point? My point is simply this. Anything great you will ever do in your life 
is hard. And so are you living every day? Let me ask you right now in this moment, I am blessed to share with you. When you get up in the morning, when you go through your day, when you construct your evening routine, is it all around the path of least resistance? Is it all about pleasure? Is it all about fun? Is it all about, are you a master of easy? Or are you doing what the very few do on the planet today? As you know, one of my core brain tattoos is to have the results 95% of the population do not have. You've got to commit to doing what only 5% of the population are willing to do. And what the titans do, what the virtuosos do, what the exceptionalists do, they build their days around the pursuit of difficult things. And if you do that, here's what happens. You're gonna build momentum. And if you do that, each day will be a platform for growth. But even more importantly, how do you build self-respect? It's by doing difficult things. When you say, I'd like to watch a video in the evening or my favorite TV show, but tonight I commit to spending time with my child who wants my attention and who needs me, you grow in self-respect. When you say, I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. and I'm going to run this 20-20-20 formula that Robin teaches and that has literally helped millions of people upgrade their morning routine and their energy, productivity, creativity, impact, you grow in self-respect. When you say, I'm not going to coast through my day, today I'm going to do something that's going to give me a micro win so my work and my crafts gets a little better you grow in self-respect. If each day you do difficult things and make these daily optimizations, each day through the doing of micro difficulties, you build greater self-respect. And as you build greater self-respect, you fall in love with yourself. It's a great way to build self-love. I mean, one of the tactics to remember is how do you grow self-love? You consistently make and then keep self-promises. Which brings you and I to the third truth to grow self-love. Go to the woods. Go to the woods. We spend so much time in the noise of life, we forget about the signal. We spend so much time in the frenzy of society, we forget about who we truly are. I'm challenging you with great love and respect. Don't just be a producer, be a philosopher. Don't just be out into the world, go to the wilderness. We are animals, we need to retreat. But also, at our core, we must spend time in solitude. For years, I've been teaching a philosophy, the three S philosophy. Solitude, silence, and stillness. Solitude, silence, and stillness. In this world right now of such digital distraction, such social media comparison, such busy being busy. We wake up in the morning, sometimes there's so many emails, so many notifications. We must make the time to go to the woods, physically or metaphorically. And when you find that time to practice the three S's of silence, solitude, and stillness, here's what happens. You remember who you truly are. You remember your priorities. You can build intimacy and fluency with your primary relationship. And the primary relationship, I suggest to you who you truly are. You're not your past. You're not your weaknesses. You're not your false beliefs. You're not your hypnosis. You're not your genius betrayals. When you start to spend time alone, in the woods, in solitude, in reflection, that's when you can say, I am not my wounding. I am not my hatred. I am not my insecurity. I am not my sorrow. I am not my fears. I am not my stumblings. You start to hear the quiet whispers of your greatest self. And you start to remember, you are luminosity, you are a hero, you're not a victim, you're a leader. You have this goodness within you, this deep creativity within you, this great power within you that longs to see every day. And the more you spend time in the woods alone, remembering who you truly are, it's like any other relationship. You spend time with it, you nurture it, you grow it, you become aware of it. 
it gets stronger and stronger. And then you become this force of nature out in a world of so many people who have forgotten who they truly are. And you stand as an army of one of possibility and leadership and strength. Fourth truth to grow self-love is simply this. The more people you help, the more love you'll grow. The more people you'll help, the more you will expand. If you really want to times 25 your self-love, times 25 your commitment to impact. You know, Mother Teresa said it really well. It's as you help more people, you love yourself even more greatly. And it's Martin Luther King Jr., and I'll paraphrase him, he said, you know, we all can be great because greatness is not about education. Greatness is not about your position. Greatness is not about your past. Every single day we all can be helpful. And so each day we all can become great. And so I found personally, the more I shift the focus off of any, any elements of fame, fortune, applause, getting more likes, and the more I obsess and make it this monomaniacally driven mission that doesn't come from the ego, that comes from servanthood to help more people through the information I share in the world, the more joy I see in my own life. The more I pursue helpfulness, the more peace I fill up with. And this episode is certainly not about me. This episode is all about you. I just want to share my own personal experience, which is the more I get the focus and spotlight off of any personal rewards, and really, not only intellectually, but emotionally, where real transformation comes from, from the heart set. That's why it's so important. A strong mindset without a pure heart set is an empty victory. And when you do that heart set work so that you turn down the voice of the low-grade emotions like anger and shame and guilt and sorrow, and when you upgrade your commitment to self-love and gratitude and servanthood, it's amazing what rewards you'll start to see in your own life. So I hope this episode has been valuable for you, inspirational, tactical, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hi, this is Robin Sharma. I invite you to subscribe to this podcast and definitely go over to robinsharma.com for more information, tools, and resources on mastery, elite performance, and living a world-class life.